Hello. I've only got 15 minutes, so I'm starting even though you're moving. If you'd like to talk to each other somewhere else, that'd be great. Uh, my name is Stella Duffy, and I'm going to answer the same questions that Andrew did, but um, I've, oh, I've got a piece of paper, but fuck it. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, me, politics, changing the world, and fun palaces, not necessarily in that order. Um, as I said, I'm Stella Duffy. I'm a novelist, a theatre maker. I'm not Carol Ann, okay? If you thought the Poet Laureate was here, you're shit out of luck. It's just me. Um, is Amelia still in the room? Because it's really important when she was talking about how the suffragettes were in the vanguard um, and they were, they were young women, that she knows that Kate Shepherd, the brilliant New Zealand and Liverpudlian suffragette who gave the votes to women in New Zealand 25 years before Britain did, was actually 46. So while we're very excited for the young activists, come on people, let's hear it for middle-aged and elderly activists as well. Because the truth is that I was passionate as fuck when I was 21. And by the time you get, I'm 51 now, I'm 52 in three weeks time. By the time you get to 52, it's really bloody hard to still be passionate as fuck. It's really tough, not least because everyone is telling you that what you think and what you care about doesn't matter and you don't know because you're too fucking middle-aged and there is an assumption that you've had it all easy and if another bloody person from the arts tells me that I came of age at a time when the arts gave everything to everybody I'm going to have to fucking slap them because that time has never existed it has never existed there has never been a time when someone like me born in a council estate, the youngest of seven children, in a council estate in Woolwich, who grew up in a multicultural town in New Zealand that was multicultural before it was trendy, there has never been a time when someone from the working class had it all, ever. And there still isn't. And there are a lot of us who are still really, really fired up about this. And I welcome the middle class to be fired up about it as well. I welcome everyone to be fired up about it because the guts of our problem isn't money, it's inequality. And the guts of our problem in Britain is still the screwed class system. And the guts of our problem is we do not talk about class. We're not talking about community. We're not talking about where we live and we are not talking locally. And I know you can feel really disempowered. I have too. I know we can all feel like there is nothing we can do. But for the past two years, I've been working on a project, and I know it sounds really diff weird to go from class action to fun palaces, <laughs> but I'm talking radical fun here. In around 1961, the playwright, the, the theatre director, Joan Littlewood, and the architect, Cedric Price, came together to envisage an idea of one venue to house them all, all the arts, all the sciences, all culture, all politics, accessible for the first time ever to all. And it is no good someone from the Royal Opera House telling me, or any of you opera lovers, telling me that the tickets are 10 quid now. No, they're not. The tickets are only 10 quid to somebody who would normally pay 25. You know as well as I I do, that 10 quid tickets are marketing, they are not engagement. The arts have never been open to all people. And what we're trying to do with Fun Palaces is we're trying to change it, not because the arts are so fucking special, but because the arts are a way to talk to each other. And the arts and sciences are how we understand ourselves as human beings. When we look at what is going on, when we look at ourselves, we cannot but do it politically. So what happened with the pilot of Fun Palaces last year was 138 places around Britain, 130 of them in Britain, seven of them out of the country, had 3,183 local volunteers creating events in, by, and for their own community. We weren't flying in world-class orchestras to some poor, deprived area because we don't think that flying in experts counts. We believe that everyone can be their own leader and that every group knows best what they need. I am sick to death of people talking about community as if we are not all part of community, as if community is not all of us. And what happened was that there was a group in Farnham, a group in Farnham, which is pretty fucking UKIP land, actually, 
eight of whom work together, six of whom do not speak English as their first language and are not British nationals, who decided because they do not feel integrated with their community, who decided because they have never felt welcomed in Farnham. They're French, they're Portuguese, they're from Sierra Leone, they're from Ghana, and I can't remember the other two places. Anyway... They've never felt part of their community. They decided to make a fun palace because they could see that it's political grassroots, that it is talking to your neighbour. And they created a local fun palace and they did it on less than 20 quid of donations. And they made an event because the Farnham Museum gave them the museum for a day and they welcomed in their local community. And Kareen, who was one of the women who organised it, said not only did it change her life organising it, but she spoke to her neighbours for the first time in six years in Britain. There are ways... that. Fun palaces is a way, but I am suggesting that instead of going, the system is fucked, we know the system's fucked, but it's the only one we've got this year. And when we've only got 90 days to the next election, it's the one we're going to have to suck up and work with. But instead of going, the system is fucked and we'll turn our back on it, we can actually start making a change where we live, with the grassroots, with our neighbours. And what happened last year was that these 3,183 volunteers all over the country, in a field in Yorkshire, in um, Wigtown in Scotland, in Glasgow on the shipyards, Dozens of them in South London, because funnily enough, South London people really understand community. Hardly any in North London. Oh, well. Um, well, I'm sorry. If people feel like they've already got provision, as many, many people in North London do, they didn't end up making fun palaces. The people in South London who did make fun palaces come from the people who felt like they didn't have provision. The people in Croydon made their fun palace in the shopping centre. They weren't saying, come to our big, glossy building. They were saying, we can talk to each other one-to-one. -one. I can barely see you because the lighting's so all about me and not about you. God, that's bollocks. <laughs> Talking to each other one-to-one -one makes a difference. Working in our community and working with people is what makes a difference. And yes, we should all be voting. And yes, we could all beg our children to vote and help our grown-ups and our elderly people get out to vote because God knows we're not thinking about those people well enough. But one of the things, again, that happened in the, fit, the Fun Palace in Whitstable was a young woman of 33 who'd moved out with her husband and they'd done that downsizing thing and they'd moved out of London and they became the people that the people in Whitstable called down from Londoners. And she said the only people she had met ever since she moved out of London were people her own age because she was only meeting other people at the school gate and it was breaking her heart that she wasn't meeting any older people. And when she started to make her fun palace, she mixed, she joined up with the local knitting group, all of whom were women over 70. <laughs> and now she has older women to talk to because she's a woman in her 30s and she needs older women to talk to. What we can offer with fun palaces, you don't have to pay to do it, right, is a way, just a, there's dozens of them, but I would suggest you do have a look at this because we are saying that fun can be radical, that talking to each other just on a one-to-one -one basis can be radical, that creating in our community is radical because it says to Westminster, we know. We can be our own leaders. We can step up. We can take charge. And if you let us do it on a community and local basis, I promise you we can do it bigger and better as we progress. Fun Palaces says... Anyone can be a leader, anyone can run an event, anyone can create community because we are all community and we can all do it together. It's really fine for you to go. I've just seen you looking at your watch. Go, go, it's fine. I won't mind. Go, run like the wind. Um, okay, so we've got six minutes. Um, the bit that I was going to say that explains why I'm here is that when um, Andrew's parents turned around and said, some people, we call them socialists, my dad would be driving in our very old car going... Tory swine, every time a posh car went by. The thing that changed my life was that when I was 15, the youngest of seven, both my parents left school at 13. They were both born in 1921. They had to leave school at 13 because they were 14-year-olds um, at 13 because they were 13-year-olds in the Depression. They were the oldest in their families. There was no money to keep them at school. And the youngest of seven, all six of my older siblings left school at 16. Um, one, because she got pregnant and you had to leave school in those days. The others, because they were leaving to go to work because our family didn't have enough money to keep any of the kids at school so they could then go on and get educated. Ours was a working-class family who 
loved books and cared but couldn't afford them. Not a working class family like Cameron's aspirational people. They were aspirational not for money. Why does Cameron think aspiration has to be about money? They were aspirational about education. And I was immensely privileged to be the first person in my family, including all of my cousins, to get to university. But I only got that, not because I'm so fucking brilliant. I, you know, I got it. I got it because I got to stay at school. I had the opportunity to stay at school. That's what made the difference to me. And when I was at school, a touring theatre company came to my school. And it wasn't brilliant because they were experts flown in and they were so great at the Shakespeare they were doing. What was brilliant was that I found that I knew one of them. Ten years older than me, he was the big brother of a friend of mine from primary school. I knew one of them. Somebody like me whose dad worked at the same mill that my mum and dad worked at. Someone like me was being an artist. Someone also from a poor working class family who didn't have any artists in that family. Someone like me. We need to be finding our role models from the someones like ourselves. Our communities need to be providing our role models, not the people in Westminster who went to Eton. We need to role model for ourselves. We need to stand up and make a difference for ourselves. We've got four minutes. Ask me anything you want. Hello. The Fun Palace. Oh, sorry. That was very bad, wasn't it? Anyway, <laughs> my wife calls me Tangent Woman. I just start saying, go, oh, like that. I love it when I say wife. I go, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, and I can say wife now, legally. How cool is that? We went to a wedding. <laughs> we went to a wedding yesterday, and it was a straight wedding, and the registrar said marriage is a union between two people. Instead of marriage is a union between a man and a woman, and I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that and wanted to cry because I wasn't included at my friend's wedding. And yesterday I was. God, it was brilliant. Anyway, so the Fun Palace was the idea that you could have all the arts, all the sciences, all culture, all politics in the same space. And what we're saying now and what we help people to do is to create a Fun Palace in their own location. So, there, as I said, there were 138 of them last year, some at the bottom of council estates. The South Bank made one, the RSC made one, but the ones that really excited us were the ones in community. We're doing it the 3rd and 4th of October this year. Um, and we support with PR, with marketing, with um, digital access, and with um, somebody working with, with disability access and around sustainability. I've got three more minutes. Uh, does that answer it? So anything you want, as long as it's a bit political and a bit artsy and a bit groovy. Yes, we do. Funpalaces.co.uk. Um, anybody else? Yes, hello. It's totally empowering. And what people have said to us is because they, they come to it. So the one in Luton was more about science because they had 120 scientists who wanted to share what they were doing. But they shared it at a level where anyone could understand. Little kids and grown-ups who've never touched sciences. And what we're asking people to do is to bring their expertise and share on a community level. And I say as an artist who's been creating my own work for over 30 years, most artists I know don't do a lot of community work. We give an awful lot of, of time. We don't. We give an awful lot of time and energy because we're creating and the world doesn't pay artists very much or very often, but we don't give to our communities very often. And I'm really excited about providing a way to do that. Anything else? Two minutes to go. Hello? Hello. I don't know, I just said yes to anyone who wanted to make one. I'm not going to police who wants to make a fun palace, that would be bonkers. I didn't give them any money, they did it because they wanted to. They created a free fun palace that people could take part in and enjoy. Like all the other 137 fun palaces. Anything else? One minute. Great, thank you very much. Uh, standing up for ourselves, creating in our own communities, putting the community first. We don't have to change the world when we change this little bit where we are here. It ripples out and changes the world. Thank you very much.